Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're tackling Leet Code Problem 2338. Count the number of ideal arrays. It's marked as hard and involves some neat combinatorics. But don't worry, we'll break it down step by step, making it much clearer. Ready? Let's dive in. Okay, so what's the goal here? We're given two numbers, which is the length of an array we need to imagine, and which is the biggest number allowed inside that array. We need to count how many different arrays of length we can make that follow two special rules. These are called arrays. Rule 1. Every number in the array must be between 1 and inclusive. Simple enough. Rule 2. This is the important one. Every number in the array must be divisible by the number that comes before it. So the second number must be divisible by the first, the third by the second, and so on. Our job is to count how many distinct arrays satisfy both these rules, and since the number can get huge, we need to return the answer modulo 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. Let's look at the first example. We want arrays of length 2, n equals 2, and the numbers can go up to 5, max value equals 5. Consider the first number. If it's 1, what can the second number be? The second number must be divisible by the first. Well, any number is divisible by 1. So if the first is 1, the second can be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. That gives us 5 arrays. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. What if the first number is 2? The second number must be divisible by 2, and no bigger than 5. So, the second number could be 2 itself, or 4. That's 2 more arrays. 2, 2, 2, 4. If the first number is 3, the second must be divisible by 3, up to 5. Only 3 works. So, 3, 3. If the first is 4, only 4 works. 4, 4. If the first is 5, only 5 works. 5, 5. Adding them up. 5 plus 2, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, equals 10. So there are 10 ideal arrays for n equals 2, max value equals 5. Makes sense. Okay, so how could we approach this generally? The first idea might be, well, just try generating every possible array of length with numbers up to, and then for each one, check if it satisfies that divisibility rule. But, wait a second, if, or get even moderately large, like 10,000 as the problem allows, the number of arrays to check would be astronomical. Something like raised to the power of that's definitely going to time out. We need a much smarter, more mathematical way. Let's focus on that divisibility rule. R is divisible by R1. This implies a chain. The first number divides the second, the second divides the third, all the way to the end. So every number must divide the last number in the array. Let's try fixing the last number. Say R equals X. Now, how many valid sequences? R, ET, ET, any Borlawa, any T, arranged by 2 can lead up to this specific X. This sounds like number theory. Maybe prime factorizations can help? Remember that a number divides a number if and only if. For every prime, the exponent of in prime factorization is less than or equal to the exponent of in factorization. So, our condition, E timesation, means that for any prime number, the sequence of exponents of in the factorizations of the array elements must be non decreasing. Let's say E underscore I is the exponent of prime P in the number ARR. Then we need E underscore 0 less than equals E underscore 1 less than equals E underscore 2 less than equals less than equals E underscore N1. This must hold true for every prime number involved. Okay, let's fix the last element, X equals R1. Find its prime factorization, say X equals P underscore 1 to the power E underscore 1 times p underscore 2 to the power e underscore 2, and so on. Now, for each prime factor p underscore j, we need to figure out how many non-decreasing sequences of exponents of length we can form, starting from 0 or more, and ending exactly at e underscore j. Let's think about one specific prime p with exponent e and x. We need a sequence e underscore 0, e underscore 1, e underscore n1, where 0 less than equals e underscore 0 less than equals e underscore 1 less than equals less than equals e underscore n1 equals e. How many ways can we choose these exponents? This is a classic combinatorics problem. We need to choose numbers, the exponents, e underscore 0 up to e underscore n1, such that they are non-decreasing and the last one is exactly e. Think about the differences between consecutive terms. 
let z underscore zero equals e underscore zero, z underscore one equals e underscore one dash e underscore zero, and so on, up to z underscore n one equals e underscore n one minus e underscore n two. Since the sequence is non-decreasing, all these differences z underscore i must be greater than or equal to zero. And if you add them up, z underscore zero plus z underscore one plus plus z underscore n one, the intermediate terms cancel out, leaving just e underscore n one, which we know is e. So we're looking for the number of non-negative integer solutions to z underscore zero plus plus z underscore n one equals e. This is exactly the stars and bars problem. We have items, stars, to put into bins, represented by z underscore 0 to z underscore n1. The number of ways to do this is e plus n minus 1, choose n minus 1, or c, e plus n1, n1. Okay, so, for a fixed ending number x, with prime factorization p underscore 1 to the e underscore 1, p underscore 2 to the e underscore 2, etc. The number of ways to form the sequence of exponents for prime p underscore j is c e underscore j plus n gash 1, n gash 1. Since the choices for each prime are independent, the total number of ideal arrays ending in x is the product of these combination values for all prime factors of x. Let's call this function ways of x. Interestingly, this function ways x is multiplicative. Now the final answer we want is the sum of ways x for all possible ending values x from 1 up to max value. Calculating ways x for each x involves factorization, then combinations, and summing them up. We can do better. Since ways x is a multiplicative function, we can use a sieve-like method, similar to the sieve of Eratosthenes, to calculate all ways x values efficiently up to max value. The key property is that if a prime p doesn't divide m, then ways p caret km is simply ways p caret k times ways m. And we know ways p caret k is just that combination value ck plus n1 n1. We can build up the ways array. We'll pre-compute the combination values for prime powers. Then using a sieve to find the smallest prime factor spf of each number, we can calculate ways by looking at ways as ck's i teen time bit ways i teen time the chesting based on the exponent of spf in i. So the refined plan looks like this. First, pre-compute those combination values, c of k plus n dash 1, n dash 1, for all possible exponents, k that can appear, from 0 up to the max exponent, which is about log base 2 of max value. Let's store these in an array called combs. Remember combs, 0 is 1. Second, run a standard sieve to find the smallest prime factor, spfing, for every number i up to max value. Third, calculate the ways array. We know ways is 1. Then loop from i equals 2 up to max value. Find the smallest prime factor, p equals spf. Figure out the highest power of p that divides i, say p caret k, and the remaining part m, where i equals p caret k m. Then, ways can be calculated using ways caret days and the pre-computed combs. Specifically, ways equals ways combs, taking the result modulo mod. We can efficiently track k and m during the loop. Finally, sum up all the values in the ways array from index 1 to max value, remembering the modulo. That's our answer. Alright, here's the Python code implementing that sieve approach. It looks a bit dense at first glance maybe? But don't worry, we'll walk through the key parts. It follows the logic we just discussed. First up, the boring but necessary stuff, pre-computation. To calculate combinations n choose r modulo a prime quickly, we pre-compute factorials and their modular inverses up to the maximum value needed. The maximum in our CNR will be around k plus n1, where k is at most log max value. We calculate these NCR values for ck plus n1 n1 for the needed range of k exponents and store them in the combs array. This makes looking up ways p caret k super fast later. Next, we run a standard sieve algorithm. This version is designed to find the smallest prime factor, SPF, for each number up to max value. For example, SPF 12 would be 2, SPF would be 2, and SPF 35 would be 5. This SPF array is crucial for efficiently breaking down numbers in the next step. This is the core loop where we build the ways array. We iterate from 2 up to max value. For each number i, 
we get its smallest prime factor p from our SPF array. We then look at the number previous equals i of ap. We cleverly track two things. Exponent underscore of underscore SPF, which is the exponent k of the smallest prime factor p and i. And rest underscore part, which is the part m where i equals p caret km. Finally, we use our multiplicative property. Ways is calculated as ways, the ways for the part without the p caret k factor, times combs, the ways corresponding to the p caret k factor, which we pre-computed, all modulo mod. And the last step is simple. We just sum up all the values we calculated in the ways array, from index 1 up to max value. Remember to take the final sum modulo mod as well. This gives us the total count of all possible ideal arrays. So how efficient is this approach? The pre-computation for combinations takes time roughly proportional to n plus log, max value. The sieve for SPF takes time roughly proportional to max value. The main loop to calculate the ways array also runs up to max value. The final summation is also proportional to max value. Putting it together, the dominant factor is max value. So the time complexity is roughly big O of max value plus n. Much, much better than the exponential brute force. For space, we store the SPF array, the ways array, and helper arrays up to max value, plus the factorial arrays up to n plus max value. So the space complexity is also roughly big O of max value plus n. So let's quickly recap the journey. We started with the definition of an ideal array, focusing on the divisibility rule. This led us to think about prime factor exponents needing to be non-decreasing. We used combinatorics, specifically stars and bars, to find the number of ways to form these exponent sequences for a given prime power, resulting in the formula CE plus N1, N1. We realized the function ways x, counting arrays ending in x, was multiplicative. This allowed us to use a sieve-based method to efficiently compute all ways x values, up to max value, and sum them up. This combination of number theory, combinatorics, and efficient computation using a sieve, gets us to the final answer within the time limits. Hope that explanation helped clear things up. It's a cool problem mixing different math concepts. If this was useful, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe for more leak code breakdowns, or leave a comment if you have any questions or other approaches. And hey, if you're feeling extra supportive, the Boba Fund link is always there. Keep practicing, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next video.